Welcome back, everybody, to the final day of Contender South America for the regular season. It's our last match of the day. Elf Org versus Fury, fourth and fifth place, battling for the final spot, getting to playoffs. The loser drops down to trials to join Black Dragons. And this is going to be the most important match and also probably the closest one. And I'm excited to get into this match. How are you guys feeling about it? I mean, I'm super excited. Like, the last match of the season is actually very important. How often do we get to say that? So I am really, really looking forward to this, and uh, uh, I can't wait to see it. Well, yeah, LFORG are known, are kind of that underground team. You know, they've been taking maps off of good teams, such as the Game 5 against LFT Owl, and pushing Istris to the brink, taking a map off of them as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of weird to call them the underground team because at the beginning of the season, we kind of highlighted them as being really, really good. And then they've had a couple of struggles here with uh, some issues with players having having connection struggles. They kind of lost to Isurus Gaming as a result, but LF Org has been really, really good. They took LFT Owl, the best team in this group, to a map five and often and actually outplayed them at times. So I think here when we when we're gonna watch LF Org, I think they're definitely the favor the favorite team in this in this uh, in this matchup. But uh, uh, I think one of the things to, to, to sort of uh, take a quick look at them is that uh, the composition they play, they play the Zen Goats very frequently, and this could actually be uh, pretty difficult for Fury. Yeah, this will be really difficult for Fury, especially if they carry on with their trend of running the Moira Goats, because as we know, the Zenyatta Goats is that much stronger, especially if you're going to be running any sort of a, a dive, if you're running the Winston Goats, anything like that, you really need that long range healing. Moira's orbs tend to fly off in random directions, and you lose a lot of healing that way. Zenyatta is just superior um unless of course fury comes out with the craziest moira goats we've ever seen it's it's just going to be an, an lf org goats stomp really but mm. i feel like fury are going to bring it though i'm really excited i'm hoping compositions some, some interesting things in the previous games we've seen some may some junk rat some widow maker so i'm really excited for this match as you say it's mm -hmm. going to be a really close one it's going to be good the winner goes to the playoffs, loser stays in trials, and we're heading into our first map of Elios and sending over to Jamerson and Katrina to bring you through the action. Thank you guys so much. And yeah, we are heading into the final match of the regular season here and such an important one. Here in Group B, LFO and Fury both trying to punch their ticket into the playoffs, both sitting out one and three. Katrina, this is such an important match. Is, and this is just a holiday gift that we're able to cast this together. This, t these two teams are more similar than one might imagine, especially when t discussing low life and night. These two Zaryas are extremely aggressive and often use their bubbles a bit more for charge than saving them for key attacks. So I'm looking now, to see a bit more patience coming in from them. We do have Moira's coming out from both sides in this setup for the Goats. It's a mirror matchup as LFO. They find themselves outside of the point. It's Fury to take position first. We'll see who's able to crack this open. Mate just jumps on in with that charge, connects Ooh. onto win 98. Mate is dropped down low and he will fall for his efforts though, but it's still a 5v5 right now and it's Shinigami to take out his counterpart. It's Fury coming up on top here as they evict LFO from the points. Fury has glitched now as their diva, replacing Dago Steam a couple weeks back. Glitch was a major acquisition, helping with Fury's identity as a highly aggressive team. Glitch is to a lot of their problems and cultivated their success as they went further and further onto the season. So watch for Glitch to be extremely aggressive with this next self-destruct, which should be coming out quite shortly. Although Mate does have an earth shatter for this next initiation. Very interesting swap off coming out. Balti going over to the Zen now. He was so close to that coalescence. It's going to allow Win98 to actually get it herself now. The coalescence will be used. Earth Shatter connects onto a few members of LFO, and they will be able to clean up. Will Fury, just a security sound barrier there used by Express. That might actually come back to bite them in the next team fight. Yes, um, there, there is a thing as being too cautious, as I've sadly found out a lot of times in my life. Express has just found out that himself, using that sound barrier a bit too uh, defensively, let's just say. Frix and Swaron now both have ultimates I'm looking for org, and Searchy and Balti have so much ultimate charge on the support size as compared to Fury. Graviton Surge is used on the wall and it does connect with the members of Fury, allowing LFO to take out both Knight and Keith, and they will be able to clean this up. And just like that, kind of wish you had a sound barrier there, Fury. Yeah, I was about to say, Jamerson, what would have happened if Express <laughs> actually had that sound barrier there? We probably would have been to 
almost a 99% situation on the side of Fury, but that's all right. Glitch has that ultimate, that self-destruct that has been used so aggressively in the past, often getting triple kills. Surgery, however, having that sound barrier alongside Balti, almost having the transcendence. Win 98, still very comfortable on the Moira, but it's going to be very difficult to keep Keith alive if that Discord orb is used well by Balti. The rally is popping to go in for the engage, but the sound barrier is there for LFO as they get counter aggressive onto them. Great earth shatter coming out from LFO, and they will follow that up. That's a clean team fight coming out from LFO. A very necessary team fight win, and Mate was the only one that did use an ultimate, which is a major win for LFO. Now, Fury is now winning in the race for ultimate economy, with their supports now being able to charge up all of that ultimate charge. He now has an Earth Shatter of his own and is just as aggressive as Mate. Here we go. Oh, there's a huge Earth Shatter followed up with the Coalescence, but they're not able to make this damage stick. Trying to chase down this Zarya right now, but Low Life will be able to survive for now, crucially, because he's got the Graviton Surge ready. Transcendence will be popped by Balti as they now go on top of LFO, but in their aggression, they lose Sauron. And so it's the counter engage coming out from Fury as they jump onto the point. Nice Earth Shatter with the Graviton Surge, but Mate is not able to follow that up. Extend, extended team fight now as another grab comes out. It's night this time. They're able to take out Balti with it. Fury will be able to clean this up and take possession of the points. It is going to come down to one last team fight here as Fury tick up. I'm so shocked that Keith was able to survive throughout all of that damage. Keith is one of the more aggressive Reinhardts in all of South American contenders and was at around 50 health and still was not punished. Looking forward, he's going to want that team fight back. And they only have a rally available, which they will initiate with. Rallies use and look, low life now finally getting some energy. We'll be able to get some damage across for now. Overtime ticking away. Frix was able to touch it with that diva to keep it alive. But here's the coalescence. Crucial DMAC coming out. That's gonna allow Mate to get the kill on to Express. But oh, low life gets taken out of the battle, but it doesn't matter. LFO have the numbers. When 98 falls, the point will flip. LFO keep this map alive for now, and Fury have one more opportunity. So I think Keith is regretting that charge, even though they did take out Lowlife, who had such high charge from that bubbles. Uh, Keith had that Earth Shatter for that last fight, and in combination with Glitch, might have been able to make something happen. Now we're in 99 versus 99 territory. Oh, oh. they're not able to touch the point at all. It's oh. very unfortunate for them, but it's going to be LFO taking the first point here on Ilios. Yeah, that, that, that was 99 to 99 territory, but um, it wasn't a fight whatsoever even though glitch did get yeah. an impressive double kill at the end it doesn't really matter if no one is on the point that that mini nuke does not count as a body on the point they probably were hoping for a bomb situation but now we are on to ruins and looking for org it looks like we'll be running a sniper with Bal balti now thinking about running that soldier 76 i'm definitely curious to see if this will be the case but right now i think they're just teasing me as they are looking now at the may okay they're, they're, they're just having fun with me today, Jamerson. Low life will go over to the Widowmaker, though. Balti oh, was kind of hogging it for a while. I was like, no, no, no. I'm going to be the Widow now. So wait, OK, I guess I have to go back to Zen. But I'm we do have the Zen's out from both sides. Win 98 going over to the Lucio now. Express going over to the Zenyatta. We'll see if this Widowmaker can do anything. Fury need to play the line of sights. But now they're out in the open. And this is a dangerous proposition for Fury here as Express oh. gets caught twice. But he's able to get behind that pillar, keeping him alive for now. Glitch will get d though. And that means low life. What? Gets taken out by the Buddy Blaster. Yes, okay. the baby diva does come in. Right All right, and so just moving forward. <laughs> Fury, glitch the man of the hour here. Will finally fall down though as Frix cleans him up. Wasn't able to get back into that mech. Mate gets booped off by Win 98. Will not be outdone. Never mind. It is Whoa. by Searchy. This this fight is going everywhere right now. Low life is back in the fray though. Back on this Widowmaker can make a difference, but he needs to connect with these shots. Hasn't been able to quite yet. That's three gone missing against that Zarya, and so that allows Fury to take the point first definitely Knight leading the charge, well, literally with that Zarya now having a Graviton Surge available. And you can see that even though Low Life is quite close to that infrared site, he wasn't hitting those vital headshots, only getting really body shots onto Express on the Zenyatta. So I, I do hope he switches over to this, that Zarya, excuse me. Early Graviton Surge, just get it onto the wall, get the members of LFO, just one or two, it's fine. And a nice stagger out onto Frix here. Fury, sitting at 30%. 
and with a whole lot of ultimates in their bank. Love it when teams only use one specific ultimate for these moments. Shows so much patience. Shinigami is now being proactive with this rally as they get closer and closer to this choke point of ruins. Now they do have full armor across the board. This is going to be a difficult fight for LFO as they don't have the big tank ultimates. Low life is now over onto that, uh, swapped over to that Zarya, and the Shatter comes out. Frakes gets caught by it, but the Transcendence is there to cover it, and an early sound barrier too. Oh, this is not what we were looking for in the support ultimates, but Zoran was able to take out Shinigami, and Glitch, a nice self-destruct, comes out Surgy, still going back and forth between these two teams right now, but LFO have to slow this down right now. Without Searchy, without that amp it up, it's gonna be difficult to try and engage. They're gonna go for it though. Mate, Mate gets on top of Win 98 now. The health bar is looking real low on the side of Furious. Glitch is about to get demecked here. It's gonna be Mate take out his counterpart. And now they are losing bodies, our Fury, but they've done their damage. They're already at 80%, even though they lose this fight. Yes, exactly. It is really the percentage and the time on the point that matters for Fury. And they have already reached 90% to zero as Looking For Org finally takes this point. They have plenty of ultimates to sustain this control, however, especially with Balti having that transcendence and all three tanks having those vital ultimates. But Fury has plenty of tools as well with Knight having a Graviton Surge of his own. It's going to be important for Fricks to get that that defense matrix ready, as Knight can be a bit um, enthusiastic about his Graviton Surge placements. LFO playing this very cautiously, allowing them to just walk up with this grab. It connects onto three. Soron is caught in there. Transcendence is used to keep everyone topped off. Earth Shadow by Keith, but does not connect. Mate, though, comes in. What was that? A six man Earth Shatter connects onto the entirety of Fury, and they clean that up. LFO do 40%. They're keeping this map alive. Absolutely beautiful Earth Shatter coming in for Mate. Great coordination alongside Low Life, but that means now that the ultimate economy is getting more and more in favor of Fury. It's that back and forth that you do have to worry about. So even though those two ultimates were invested, there is an opening now for Fury, especially with that transcendence and sound barrier coming online. Rally is used, armor across the board. Express even has a transcendence ready. LFO will answer with the Warhorn of their own. They get right on top of Mate, take him out. Great focus fire coming up from Fury. They do have to disengage for a second as that self destruct is used, prompting that self, uh, excuse me, that transcendence. And the sound barrier now comes out. Low life goes down to his own right click here. And that's going to mean a man advantage for Fury. They're going to be able to charge forward. Frix gets de mecked, and Fury are going to win this fight out gonna flip the point and now there's a small margin of error for LFO to try and get onto the point but Fury don't even want to give them that Mate tries to get in but he will get taken out Fury will even this up it's gonna be one to one as we move on to well as well the equalizer of all they were going to see some pretty phenomenal Lucio play coming in from Searchy and win 98 most likely I am curious to see if Keith and Knight decide to stick with this uh, Reinhardt and Zarya play, especially as Mate was just favoring the Winston on Ruins. So definitely curious to see the compositions. I hope we do see Frix's Wrecking Ball, but hey, I, I think they're just trying to trying to um, debate me a little bit today. Hey, if it's going to be any team, it's going to be LFO. You know, they're the ones that like to kind of <laughs> give us a little treat every now and then. We saw the Torbjorn earlier on this season, the Torbjorn defense, I believe, on Numbani. So maybe, maybe, you know, they show us a little love. Yes, and if Low Life sticks on this Roadhog, my all-time favorite hero in Overwatch. Oh my gosh, he is. Yes, I am so excited to see this Roadhog play, being able to hook someone, get that environmental kill quite quickly, and especially all of that burst damage would be extremely difficult for a slow-moving hero such as Express on that Zenyatta to deal with. Both teams opt to try and push the inner portion of the map there, but take a look at LFO. They huh. spot out Fury's composition. Uh, it's regular, it's Zen Goats, right? And they decide maybe, yeah, they're going to swap off the Roadhog. Low life now going over to the Zarya here. So they give up the point for free, but it, it's, it's you know, to try and get, a, I guess, the better composition here. And there's no real ultimate advantage now for Fury due to that quick decision making before any fight occurs. Of course, my heart is very sad. We will not see Roadhog, but hey, my it, it is the smarter choice for this situation. And they might be able to win this mirror match up fairly. Win has to be careful. She was dropped down low to about 50 HP. Someone's playing around in the well. You got to be careful there. It's a caution. Now, Searchy looking for this boob is not going to find it. It's going to allow Shinigami to get on top of his Brigitte to take her down, but it's still LFO. 
Campbell just plow through Fury here. That's the full team wipe. That is a LFO. classic Earth Shatter. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, all LFO. of them. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. But LFO, yes, as you were saying, is just coordinating those Earth Shatters so perfectly with Suaron getting those shield bashes quite early. Now, Balti is so close to Transcendence, once again, being very aggressive and breaking Keith's shield so quickly. Now, Knight hasn't been able to bubble Keith as rapidly as I would have hoped because those bubbles are being used so aggressively. So watch for that shield breaking to have some major consequences. Transcendence is used as Mate was dropped down low. Now, Keith going in for the flank, but the Earth Shatter does not connect. And so now they're able to continue on in this fight. Self-destruct is used by Frix here, but it's not connected. That's a huge Huge Graviton Surge that they jump on top of them right now. Keith charges on in, but now he's overextended. He is fighting against the rest of the tanks, but he gets booped away. And so Sauron will pop that rally as they get back onto the point. They still have possession of it. They're at 50% now as they're trying to get aggressive onto Fury. Glitch finally gets back into his mech here. And still, LFO, this is working out their favor until a boop comes in by Searchy, taking out Knight. Shinigami answers, though, punishing him forward, and it's a four-man shatter out from Keith. And Win just cleans that up, just brushes them off into the hole. Oh, that was such a beautiful boop. Oh, great coordination from Win and Keith. And the point finally does flip over to Fury's favor. They are at 42% to 66 for looking for org. But looking for org definitely has that ultimate economy advantage with those amazing Earth Shatter and Graviton Surge ultimates. So Keith is going to have to play a bit more defensively, playing those mind games with Mate, trying to make sure that Suaron doesn't get that early shield bash. Shinigami is going to have to be just as vigilant, keeping aware of his counterpart's position. Low Life is looking for that grab, and he was just waiting for the defense matrix to be gone, but there is a transcendence there to keep them all topped off. So as it fizzles, the fighters reset until the Earth Shatter comes out. It's only Glitch that gets caught in it, but the DMEC, that is so worth right now. Mate has to be careful. He is low. He gets cleansed of that Discord Orb, and he's able to get back into the fight with a great Fire Strike, taking out Win98 and LFO. Looking to close out this team fight, but they lose Mate and Low Life. So this is a dangerous proposition. Shinigami punishing him for this, taking out Frix and Glitch, cleaning up Swaron. Fury, somehow get back into this fight. Well, has taken way too many lives today, right there with Shinigami booping Frix into the well exactly after Serchi had done the same to his own tank. So we are getting some very classic well revenge. It's a bit like Sparta, isn't it? Overtime ticking away. It's at 99% as the Graviton Surge is used. Now, Win98 able to survive that boop. Of course, in the Lucio versus Lucio battle. The self destruct comes out from Frix and somehow it does connect. Win98. Oh, these Lucios have to be careful with that. And that might actually be able to like allow them to turn it around. Keith now coming in. It's going to be Fury to keep this alive, though. Overtime ticking away. No one from LFO gets onto the point. That will be Fury taking the first map. Winning two to one, Fury did show that aggression often does pay off as we do see Glitch, Keith, Knight, just making these plays that would work in theory, but because the whole team is so coordinated, has such a similar mindset and their identity, I, I feel like this team knows exactly who they are, how they want to play, and they are executing what it, they are rising things? to the occasion. Yeah, one of the interesting things, you know, the desk talked about it, and uh, you mentioned it, especially in our briefings before this matchup, that we were expecting, you know, to see a lot of more of it. LFO also, you know, opened up with that. Were you expecting that coming out from LFO? It was not. I, I believe LFO does run an excellent um, Zenyatta coming in from, from Balti. However, with Fury, I was not shocked to see Win98 on that Moira. She is known as one of the best Mercy players in the entire South American region stunning mercy play so it is a bit of a difficult meta for win 98 to play in but her moira is also very good but the lfo trying to exploit that in later matchups even though the the lucio play coming in from win 98 was also quite good when you're looking at those straight goats battles she will typically take the moira which is frankly, a bit weaker than the Zenyatta or the Ana variation. Yeah, Fury really trying to make the playoffs here so that we can play on the new patch. We can see Ash in play where, you know, the Ash along with the Mercy Pocket is pretty darn strong. But again, they have to get their LFO and they are now two maps away from doing that with this 1-0 lead. And this was such a battle between both teams. It went back and forth, back and forth. Every single point was contested almost to 99-99. 
Yes, it was extremely intense. And I'm sure Fury kind of did wish that they were playing Ash so that Bob could have contested that point at the last moment on, on, on the Lighthouse Arena. They didn't even touch the point. So I was a bit concerned going into the future maps, but definitely turned it around on Ruins and well. Outstanding plays, especially from Keith. Those Earth Shatters. Like, come on, Jamerson. Th those were <laughs> beautiful. Hey, I, I'm, I'm almost losing my voice just because of the Earth Shatters alone. <laughs> but we also have to talk about uh, the support play. You know, all day long, we, we all season long, we've been seeing, you know, 3-3. Uh, three, three. And it's crucial that teams don't layer their ultimates. And, um, you know, so far, we've only really seen that once or twice where the Zenyatta and the Lucio both pop it. But uh, luckily, I believe it was LFO who had done it. Not quite sure. Uh, it was only that one instance wasn't punished too hard. But this is a thing that you do have to bring up, right? Um, the discipline with the support ultimates and making sure you don't layer them. Um, how, f how well do you think the supports are like faring right now in getting that kind of coordination down? I think they're doing very well. Fury did make a mistake on on Lighthouse where it, it was a bit of a reactionary um, use of coalescence due to an amazing Graviton surge, which did lead to them losing the point and not being able to return and contest in enough time. But my pet peeves in Overwatch, that support over um, overlapping, I understood it at that point. There was still a bit of logic. It, it seemed more of like a reactionary decision instead of a lack of coordination. So. These two teams so far have been on point with their timing. And Hollywood is going Ooh. to be our next map. Now, uh, Fury have played Hollywood twice, mm. Numbani twice, and the, I think it's the same for LFO. Neither of them have the greatest track record on these hybrid maps. Actually, it looks like both teams have lost every single hybrid map. So one of them is going to break the curse of losing hey. hybrid maps. <laughs> Which one do you think it's going to be, Fury or LFO? Well, that's difficult to say. Um, I, I'm going to go with LFO in that I think that Fury does perform a bit better on control and assault maps in that you can have those team kills with those flashy big earth shatters, huge self-destructs. I think LFO has more of an ability to be consistent in winning team fights, even those vanilla ones throughout a hybrid map where you do have to move the payload along. So I do give the edge to them a little bit more slightly, but hey, Fury, they did take Elios with quite a strong finish on well, so I could be surprised. I heard for a split second the sounds of a doom frisk, uh, doom fist, excuse me, got really excited <laughs> here, but uh, as we load into the map instantly, he's, he's already swapped off. Um, Balti, oh probably just gonna use that sonic arrow with the Hanzo, and it looks like it is gonna just be 3-3 three, three matchup once again, as uh, we get into the next map, LFO need to tie this series up. Remember, the winner of this series will move on to playoffs. The loser goes down to relegations. You do not want to be in relegations. Definitely not. This is the map that has the most impact on both of these teams. So you can tell that these teams really are playing with everything they have. Mate is going extremely low, so is Sauron. Oh, Searchy though, he was trying to play that Lucy on the high ground over by Water Cooler, got tagged by a few Zen Orbs, had to back away. Both teams basically just charging up their ultimates right now, as it looks like they're trying to buy some time on the side of LFO to get that Reinhardt shield back up again. Remember, that is a huge resource, that 2000 HP shield as they wrap around from the backhand side. Keith gets moved in by Searchy, but they're not able to punish it quite yet. They kite away and Keith is staying alive for now, but he is still low HP, has low life, getting some nice right clicks in, trying to get win 98, bouncing around on that Lucio. The Earth Shatter doesn't do anything quite yet, but the charge is there. The two for one exchange. They lose the mech on the side of LFO, but they are winning out in the fight as Shin Shinigami goes down. Glitch will get demeched, and now the rem remnants of Fury will fall, and that's going to allow LFO to start gaining progress here on point A. This is what I was talking about. Keith charges in, is extremely aggressive, does get the kill on Sasurgi, which is a valuable pick, but is punished by the rest of LFO. And therefore, he does use that ultimate. He does use that Earth Shatter and doesn't get much out of it. This is what I am a bit worried about. And Fury does need to overcompensate for their main tanks aggression as a bubble does come in to protect Keith from himself. They do have the grab and self-destruct combo, but it's gonna be the grab coming out. There it is. Got eaten up, I think. No, never mind. Both caught into it. But the Transcendence is there for Fury to keep them topped off. Earth Shatter is used by Mate. It did connect, but Keith is there to stand front line. Connects on a huge one. Oh, oh Swaron. Barely able to survive for now. They were able to take out Searchy, and there we go. 
Fury clean up this team fight. LFO, though, still have plenty of time in the bank. Four minutes and 20 seconds as we move on to the second phase. And LFO are winning in that alternate economy battle for support ultimates. Probably the most important in terms of sustain on hybrid with Balti at Transcendence and Suwaron rapidly approaching that rally, whereas Shinigami and Express are only in the 30%. And that is crucial here as they engage with that self-destruct. Oh. Express just watching his demise, his life flash before his eyes. They've already picked up two, have LFO. This is going to be an easy cleanup for them. But, you know, if you're playing this 3-3, you got to make this as costly as possible. And so they're delaying on the point. Win 98 just shows up to delay it a little bit longer. And now LFO will be able to roll this along. Express just went straight into the iris with that self-destruct. That was a bit painful when you're a Zenyatta and you see the meteor strike coming, you see the self-destruct coming and you're like, no, I'm too slow, I can't do anything. Very yeah, I mean, moment. He, Shinigami was there, maybe he could have tried to block it, but at that point, uh, yeah, I, you just kind of give up, right? <laughs> Rally is going to be used, Sauron. They use it as the team tries to get aggressive, pushing off from the payload here. Their Graviton Surge connects onto Surgy, but look at the charge. It does connect, Knight is able to take out Surgy, and now a three-man Earth Shattered. They Punished with 98 with it as Low Life cleans up Shinigami. Self Destruct is going to be used by Fury. Try and delay, and it connects onto Sauron. And Self Destruct is able to trade away effectively for now until Low Life gets back into this fight. He's able to clean up Knight and LFO. They were, you know, just stopped a little bit there at the gates, but since then have been able to just push forward. They're going to be able to take the points as Fury give it up for free. As Express was just too late with that transcendence, which did lead to his two support counterparts being taken out by that phenomenal Earth Shatter. And Low Life is even adding salt to the wound there as they are being extremely aggressive on the side of LFO, gaining even more space. They have a bronze four minutes left to make it to the end of Hollywood. And right now, this is kind of what I was talking about at the beginning of this matchup. Looking for Org is a bit more patient. They, they stagger out their ultimates a bit more frequently and therefore are having greater success on these hybrid maps. Low Life is starting to be quite sneaky and is preparing for that Graviton Surge. He got spotted out by Glitch though, so he does back away for now. He has lost a lot of charge because he was playing so passively. Earth Shatter blocked by the barriers. Did connect onto a few, but they weren't able to finish that quite yet. Self Destruct comes in. Mate taking out Keith. That means there's no shield for Knight or Express to try and stand behind. That's going to allow LFO just to clean up this team fight without losing anyone. That was the transcendence, the self destruct. That's all that was used by LFO. They've got the shatter, they've got the graviton surge, and this is a dangerous prospect for Fury. Looking to try and recontest this. There is the graviton surge connects as Keith is dropped into it. The sound barrier is not in time to keep him alive now. Counter sound barrier now by LFO as they look to close this out with plenty of time on the board. Graviton surge connects onto Sauron and Fricks, but they don't have the damage. They don't have the numbers. Shinigami sent to the skies as he does fall and Keith just barely not able to make it back as he gets booped back LFO with the huge time bait definitely very dominant performance for LFO you can see why they chose this map in particular well played they have two minute and a half minutes remaining if it does go into extra rounds now I am curious to see how Fury will respond they did have trouble against LFO's patience and ultimate management so I want to see if they're going to have to build up, let's say, three or four ultimates at a time to win these key battles and have a continuous presence on the payload. So this is going to be a major challenge for Fury. They do have their work cut out for them. I do hope that LFO does keep with Balti on that Doomfist, but let's be real. He's going to stick with that Zenyatta. Even though we do see quite a bit of Sombra Doomfist on Hollywood, the Reinhardt is just so important for LFO and Fury. Both of these teams rely on Mate Ready and Keith as their foundation. So they're going to try to create the best situation for these two main tanks. Always oh, just playing with our hearts. Balti, disappointed uh, me, my man. We'll go swap over to the Zenyatta, but uh, it's so important, right? You need these ultimates. You need the transcendence and the sound barriers, along with the, the, the wealth of utility, of course, that Zenyatta's offer. It is, once again, Gonna be the 3 3 matchup. And last time it was interesting. Uh, we saw an LFO's attack. They make that wrap around from the backhand side, really able to catch out uh, Fury there. We'll see if uh, Fury approach it the same way. A few more seconds before the gates unlock. No surprises. Yeah. They're not gonna, you know, 
you say that with such sadness. It, 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 it actually kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Shinigami does get quite a bit of damage there, but oh my gosh, Jamerson, that, that almost brought a tear to my eye. Yeah, now Keith. His uh, fire strike gets eaten up by that diva. He was dropped low. He's got to be careful. He's now at 50 HP as he gets the repair pack in. It's Mate that now receives the brunt Ooh. of the damage. Keith catches Swaron looking the other way with that big old hammer, takes him out. And that is huge. You lack the control now. You lack the extra sustain coming up from the third support. And that means Fury slowly going to walk down LFO. They're stuck here in the cafe trying to make their way on out. There are some low members on the side of Fury, but they're not able to punch it at all. Our LFO, and that's going to be a free point for Fury. Losing that Brigitte so early was very painful on the side of LFO. Right now, the armor pack is one of the most powerful, that has some of the most utility of any ability in this game. And of course, there is that area of effect to healing that Brigitte does provide, but just losing Suaron, who is just connected to Mate at the side, meant that that main tank could not be as aggressive as he wanted. And that is also a signature style of both main tanks. So he could do pretty much whatever he wanted. And you can see that in terms of ultimate charge for Fury. They have so much more in, the, in their pockets. Keith, he's got that Earth Shatter, but oh no, Shinigami was caught Ooh. out there. That's going to allow them to get two kills and instantly LFO. We'll try to find more, but Fury back away. Make sure they don't give up too much here. Remember, they have to keep pace with LFO. They finish off the map with two minutes and 36 seconds here. So you can't just dawdle around. You have to be really disciplined with your disengages. And that's what they were. Now, they're making their approach once again. We have so many ultimates online. Total 12 here, but that's the Graviton Surge and the Self-Destruct. Sound Barrier is used, and that keeps Slow Life actually alive through this. Transcendence will be popped by Fury, but Express has to back away as the Earth Shatter connects. Four members caught out, and it's Shinigami taken for a ride as the charge is there. LFO on the defense, looking to hold out here. Will force back Fury once again. 12 ultimates used, two deaths. But the life is able to get so much more charge and is already at another Graviton Surge. Night is at 30%. Major gameplay coming in from the life, protecting Mate, who now, due to that enabling, coming in from low life's bubbles is also at 72% to another Earth Shatter. Major win coming in from looking for org. Huge investments on both sides, but at least LFO has brought even more back into the mix. Oh, low life with the sneaky grab connects onto five. A good boop to disengage for now, but a counter boop. Cersei sent them all into the fray, but that might have actually punished them there. It was so close. The HP bars were so low, but now this is the momentum that Fury are looking for. The pin isn't enough to actually take out Balti, but luckily Express is there to finish him off. So now Fury will be able to get this payload going. Ow. I mean, just just impressive that Fury was able to deal with all of that extremely quick damage coming in from Lowlight, come out triumphant, and now they have even more ultimates to spare with Shinigami being able to provide armor that will really help them deal with this self-destruct. Self-destruct is gonna go out, but it does not connect with anyone. It does leave Shinigami. Just split off from the rest of the team and Swaron punishes it. And once again, Fury go for the disengage. Mate tries to catch them while they were trying to get aggressive onto them, but now, Excuse me, Keith tried to use that uh, Earth Shatter to catch them getting aggressive, but it was not good enough. And so, once again, Fury sent back to spawn. Now, it looks like LFO will have the time bank advantage. Fury not able to keep up pace with them. Oh, and I do believe that LFO has been just a bit more thoughtful with their aggression. They've been timing things out a bit more appropriately as opposed to Fury, even though they do have phenomenal coordination. I've just been moving too fast. The temple has been overwhelming them. Rally is popped as they try to punish Keith here, but he does have the full support of his team. Mate has to be careful. I mean, he understands that Keith did use that shatter, but there's the Graviton Surge. That's what you need to save the shield for, the self-destruct. It gets broken, and Mate and Sauron fall, and Fury will be able to punish them. Try to get more staggers here as low life does fall. Now the payload's so close, there is a moment for LFO to try and contest this again. Yes, we will see if they will be able to, as we do see Win98 trying to scout out, seeing if anyone is coming their way. Will LFO decide to contest? It looks like they will not be able to in time as the second point does go over to Fury. Here comes even more aggression from Shinigami. Yeah, Shinigami just playing the Belter and Balti. Oh, 
A little mixed wires there in the communication <laughs> as he goes out to the point by himself. So now LFO, oh, that's so once again, have to concede more ground here. Free ground uh, for Fury to push this out. But, you know, looking at the time bank, LFO, remember, they have 2 minutes and 36 seconds. They have plenty of tools to try and delay this even more. If they can get them down to overtime, that means that LFO will have the only opportunity to attack. LFO coming in to get aggressive, will contest the point now as the Graviton Surge comes out, connects onto Keith and Glitch. The Express gives his body now as he goes in with that Transcendence. Earth Shatters connects onto three members and they don't have the follow-up. Win 98 with a great sound barrier there. Self-destruct Fricks into the back line, but I don't think he's going to catch on to anyone as they just surge forward. And both teams now just reset here. Rallies will be used as Mate finds Express and LFO looking to delay this even further. Fury forced to back away now. Mate is able to, with the help of Lowlife, take out Keith. Now time is dwindling on the side of Fury. Even though the spawns are equidistant at this point away from the payload, we do see LFO just taking so much more advantage of the space they have gained after these team fights. Suaron now finally takes out Glitch. That will even stagger this time bank even more. And Mate. Mate will be able to use this Earth Shatter very shortly. He's blocked Keith's regularly. Now it is Keith's turn to show that he can time this out just as well. There is a Graviton self-destruct and Swaron tried to find it here. It connects onto both the Squire and the Knight. But oh no, the barriers weren't enough. Glitch actually connects, taking them both out. It's a 6v4 advantage now for Fury. Still, they have to push this payload to the end. LFO were able to complete out this map. And there's still plenty of opportunities for LFO to delay this out. They've got the Earth Shatter, they've got the Transcendence, and, this, and of course the Graviton Surge. Fury need to play this expertly. Express has to be on point with this, uh, with of course his ultimate. Uh, Graviton Surge out. Express answers with that Transcendence, keeps his teammates on top. They don't overcommit to this until the Earth Shatter comes out. Transcendence answered by Balti though, keeping them all alive. Now, oh no, the Self-Destruct actually connects to Shinigami. He tried to block it, but he got CC'd up, I think. And so, Fury are forced off the point now with 30 seconds left to go. Glitch is almost able to take out Balti, but Sergi does put the final blow into Express. As you said, there's only 30 seconds remaining, and there are so many more alternates on the side of LFO. It's going to take a lot for Fury to be able to even reach this point. Now, Fury, they have to touch the point. It's 16 seconds remaining. They're waiting for the response here, but it's Knight on the right-hand side flank with that Graviton Surge. Sound barrier there will mitigate ma the majority of the damage now. Knight has to be careful. He has no barrier. He's dropped down low. Low life will finish him off. And now they're fighting at a disadvantage. They still need to complete out the map, but Glitch has to give his body for the play. He gets onto the point as Balti finds the kill onto win 98. They're just playing. Bully here on the payload, making sure no one's going to be able to touch it now. And that will be LFO to tie it up one-to-one -one going into the half. LFO does show their dominance on this hybrid map, making sure that they can stay to the payload as consistently as possible, as opposed to Fury, who often has to win these team fights and take advantage of the space they create after using three to four ultimates at a time. That can be beneficial with control, but hybrid... I'm going to give the edge over to LFO. Yeah, finally, one of the teams getting a notch under their belt uh, for the hybrid maps here. Both teams had a 100% loss rate um, going into the second <laughs> maps. Every oh. single series so far. And this is so important now for LFO, right? Uh, they lost a little bit of the momentum. It was a back and forth struggle on Ilios, but we come here to Hollywood, and now LFO have a dominant win. Does that help them out going into the next map? It definitely does. Total shift in momentum. Overwatch is such a mind game, and we do know that LFO will be coming in this next map with a lot of confidence. Now we'll see what the desk thinks as uh, we go into the second half. Go ahead, guys. Break down the first two maps of this series. We said this was going to be the most important match and the closest one, and we're absolutely right. Both these teams just fighting so hard to be able to get into playoffs. 1-1 one, one at the half, as our caster said, and a name that's going to come into our mouths is going to be Searchy. Last week pops off on the Lucio, and he does it again. Searchy has been really showing dominance in terms of these ridiculous environmental kills it's something that we've seen week after week especially on well because it is it really does lend itself to being 
like boopable, <laughs> especially when your Reinhardt gets the most ridiculous four man shatter and all you have to do is right click and you get yourself a little 3k there. I mean, Searchy, let's face it, he doesn't even need that Reinhardt shatter. He's been getting such good boops. And I mean, I feel like Lucio boops are so underrated. Like they don't get the credit that they deserve because making that opening, if you can get a really good boop into a well or off the edge of the map, if you can take out a Reinhardt or a, a Brigitte or, you know, one of those super important heroes in this position, it can change the flow of the fight. And Searchy just consistently, time and time again, getting those boops in. Well, Lafina, we... I think another tale that we like to talk about is both the Reinhardts. It's uh, Mate versus Keith, but the louder one is clearly have been Keith in this matchup. It's kind of interesting that you, like, one of the things that I highlighted at the, uh, at the beginning was, like, how are the teams going to stack up against each other, right? Like, Fury has had struggles a little bit, but today, I think Keith has been actually, like, a complete joy to watch. He's playing a very aggressive style, being enabled by his team. Fury, I wasn't sure they were able to play this Lucio-Zen combination, but they're actually making it work, and Keith is taking full advantage of it. He's often very aggressive in the Ryan v. Ryan battle when uh, Mate has the uh, Discord orb on him, and you're, you, you know, you're often seeing uh, Keith go for the big plays. Both tanks, actually, are doing are making are trying to make those 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 large those large earth shatters happen you know you often see uh in in in, in other uh places where the ryans will wait for the bash to come through the shield bash to come through for the bagitta but here both Met mate and, and keith have have tried to just play make and they'll just throw out a shatter when they see an opportunity it's actually really exciting gameplay if not you know supremely optimal but i think it's kind of exciting to see that both these teams are going for broke again we highlighted it these teams win and you're into playoffs and you can see that in how they're playing here it's so much fun watching these reinhardts throw out those shatters with reckless abandon just throw caution to the wind hit q hope for the best and get the most ridiculous three to six man shatters that we have seen. The counter shatters in particular, like if one of the Reinhardts does actually block a shatter and then comes in with a fat counter shatter, it's absolutely huge. These Reinhardts are really going in. They are being so aggressive and I feel like they, they could be a little bit more room for some passive play, but overall, I mean, it's, it's been fun to watch, so that's something. I think it's sacrifice that the teams are willing to make though, right? Because you're playing that super aggressive style, you're going for those playmaking abilities, and if you have to give up a fight and you force the enemy team to use ultimates, that's totally fine. You actually end up, you know, if not winning the fight, but you pull resources away, and it's kind of worked out. Every fight that the Shatter has been committed because, you know, they're playing so aggressively and an opportunity is seen, then what happens the next fight? Well, you know that they don't have, you know, uh, the Earth Shatter, you know they don't have the Graviton Surge, you know they don't have the Self-Destruct, and you can come back in and win off your more, uh, your better uh, economy. So I think right now, if you are, you know, both these teams, and this goes for both maps, both Ilios and uh, Hollywood, you're kind of going for that uh, go for broke. That's, that's literally what be both these teams are doing, right? You go in, you're like, okay, it's not an economy push exactly because you're using your own ultimates, but it's it's more like, can I use one ultimate and you know force the other team to use two or three? And right now, both these teams are doing a pretty good job of it. And another great matchup that we kind of noticed is Glitch and the other D.Va. And I think, like, Naori, you were saying, like, what, what are your thoughts on Glitch? Because there were some highlight moments and some low notes, too. Glitch... His diva bombs have also been a bit like the Ryan Shatters, right? Reckless abandon. In goes a diva bomb. And it's it's not just glitch. I've seen it a couple times from both divas, but particularly from glitch. The diva bomb goes out and you're like, well, it's gone down some random corridor. There's gonna be no okay, he got two, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> it's so random. So crazy. Yeah, and I don't know if that's just like a misplay from whichever opposing team, if they're really not expecting like I mean, when you play a composition over and over again, and you play a map over and again, and watching your enemy team, and you're like, okay, uh, this guy is going to self-destruct. It's probably going to come from this direction. Okay, we're all going to move in here. But then the diva throws the self-destruct where you were going. So it like catches you not out of position, but just in the weirdest possible way. And again, just one of those things that makes no sense, but it's a hell of a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> well... 
there's so many good matchups that we have seen, but we're one to one at the half. And I really want to know, guys, you guys said it was maybe going to be more one sided than it is. We're one to one, LaFon. Which team do you think is going to come out in the playoffs? Every, t every time I've picked Fury, um, I've been wrong. So I'm going to go and continue to pick Fury and say they're going to win. Uh, you know, it's, it's got to go my way eventually. Um, <laughs> but I have to say, Fury has impressed me with how much they've leveled up even this quickly. I am going to agree with Lafon, uh, but for different reasons. Not because I hope that eventually one day Fury will prove me right, but because I genuinely believe that they are the top team right now in this matchup. So, uh, But I'm going to put it at a 3-2. Map 5, here we come. Oh, we're expecting a map five, and you're going to be expecting a quick break. But when we get back, map three is right around the corner.
Welcome back, guys, to Overwatch Contenders South America, our final match of the regular season. And what a match we have. It's one-to-one -one now between LFO and Fury. And this is so important because the winner moves on to the playoffs for season three. I'm joined by Katrina, and she can tell you all about it. She's been here. Uh, this is a crazy matchup because Fury looked great even though they lost that last map. Fury have been extremely dominant on those control-esque maps. So as we do go into Hanamura for our assault map type, I'm giving them the edge this time around. I think we're going to maybe even see a map five alternating victories, but what Fury does need to do is control their aggression. That sometimes got the best of them on those hybrid maps, especially since LFO is a bit better at maintaining those consistent victories, even winning those vanilla team fights. Now, what Fury is excellent at is saving all of those ultimates and making sure that they can create just the biggest bang, ensure that they get those team fight kills. And that can be vital, especially on Hanamura point B. Then one of the adjustments we're seeing, uh, you know, you had characterized Fury as, you know, very Moira Goats heavy composition, <laughs> but now they're doing a lot more Win98 on the Lucio and Express on the Zenyatta instead of opting for that Moira first. And this has been a welcome change for them and it does make them look better. But coming into Hanamura, we see a lot of teams start off on the offense with that Moira. Is that something that we can expect? I think we will see that. I think we will see Express on the Lucio this time around with Win98 on the Moira, just charging the Coalescence as quickly as possible. Um, it, this is probably the only map type where I have seen Moira work out quite well, especially on point B, just for the quick support ultimate advantage you gain by playing that specific support hero. So Moira Goats, uh, we might see from both sides. LFO, even um, I believe on Ilios, did show off a little bit of that Moira themselves. Both of these teams, you know, not completely convinced on the Zen, but eventually once they start getting beat by it, they do make that swap. And it just it's a testament to just how strong it is. The desk has talked about it, uh, you know, uh, plenty today, but the Zenyatta is so necessary. But we also have to mention the Lucios, uh, Searchy and Win98. They have been very impressive so far on these Lucios. It's getting plenty of boops, especially Searchy getting a bit of revenge on Win98, I believe, on Well after Win98 had booped um, one of his own teammates. So, so what Win98 specifically will be playing, she did. She was predominantly the shot caller of last season of Contenders being on that Mercy. So I, I think that she will definitely be flexing more onto the Moira, controlling initiations with that Coalescence. And I'm looking forward to seeing the composition as Fury looks like it might be teasing mm. and a Widowmaker. But as I do say, it might just be teasing as looking for Org will be running that traditional triple tank, triple support goats composition with Balti on that Senyata. Yeah, so the defense, it's just going to be regular 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Fury though, as you had mentioned, Express is on the Lucio, and so that is a great signifier, right? A huge signifier that Win98 is going to probably stick with this Moira. We saw an Ilios, uh, I forget which map it was. What map was it where um, they just backed off, swapped off? Was it well, and then they well. traded composition? Yeah. Yes. So they do have that option, right? Uh, if they don't want to go with this Moira, they can always, of course, just swap back after they scout this out does look like no they they will not be using that scouting ability of sombra as we do have five seconds to go and glitch has switched over to his favorite diva nope we are going to get Zenyatta goats versus moira goats and i am a bit concerned for fury but more importantly concerned for keith as that discord orb will be directly put onto him as soon as balti can they are going to amp it up and try and get into the right-hand side here after making it through the choke point so they don't lose anyone for it. Now they're making the rotation on to the high ground here. But LFO, answer in kind, make their way onto the point. It's the drop down now as Keith eats a fire strike. That's a lot of damage coming across as Mate tries to get aggressive, has to back away though. It's going to be another reset coming out from both sides as they are looking for the proper engagement. Now they try to walk them down. Keith has to be careful. His shield has dropped down low with that 500 HP right now, and he needs to get it back on up. 200 HP backing away. He does have the Zari barrier as Mate gets stunned up, but there's the Earth Shatter. It only connects onto Glitch. And with Win98 on that Moria with the Coalescence, able to keep him up. Knight takes out Sauron and Fury. We're able to win this war of attrition as Keith will finally fall, but it's the man advantage for Fury on the offense. 
but we do see a LFO popping out that transcendence just to stall, but honestly, this is a waste of that ultimate right now as Fury does convincingly take point A. But largely due to Win 98's coalescence there, taking out Searchy is vital, as this Lucio specifically is phenomenal at booping people out of the window on Hanamura. They, this could definitely be a snowball, Jamerson. We have five ultimates coming online for Fury, especially with that Earth Shatter, Graviton Surge, Self Destruct. The combinations are endless. LFO is going to have to be getting an early pick, and there it is. There it is. Zenyatas, again, coming in clutch for their team. Balti connecting on to win 98. Thing is, though, they weren't in a very compromising position until oh. LFO chased for some more, Keith is able to not get away in Balti. Now, getting closer and closer to that transcendence. Someone was on the back door, though, able to get one tick for the team. Who was it? I don't know, able to get out with their lives, though. Never mind, it was Express. Express was able to touch it. And so LFO, give up a free tick to Fury there. Does hurt pretty badly, especially when you do get tricked. However, LFO does have plenty of ultimates and now will be paying a lot more attention to express so it's going to be very difficult for fury to penetrate these hard defenses even though they almost have six ultimates of their own express uh, um, ex expect an explosive team fight just like the one we had on early points of hollywood fury going for the high ground once again keith did use that earth shatter early did not connect but here it is the graviton serves the self destructs no connection from the side of lfo or from fury and the earth shatter is used by mate connects onto three members but they're not able to punish it quite yet until mate goes in for that charge Taking out Shinigami. They're going to instantly rotate out onto the point here. Moira is not going to be able to keep Keith alive, and they're going to lose so many members here. What looked like a great start for them, but again, you start running out of just heals. So when 98 will throw herself off the ledge to reset with her team. Fury still have plenty of time, though. Four minutes and 50 seconds left in their time bank. You can charge so many ultimates in that amount of time, and they already have a tick due to um, due to Express is a bit um, bit sneakiness. But we do see Win 98 swapping over to the Lucio and Express going over to the Zenyatta, so they are making up for Win 98's um, lack of preference for that very important hero. But they do lose some ultimate charge due to that swap. Keith has another Earth Shatter here. We'll throw it down, but the Transcendence is there from Balti. Charge onto Frix. It commits nothing except for Keith into this fight. He's not going to be able to back away. It's a two for one exchange in favor of LFO. The defense here. Fury still sticking around. His knight will give up his body. He was looking to try and get more of that ultimate, but honestly, trying to get away with, with the charge would have been better. So, though, Fury reset now. Now they're down to four minutes in this attack. Low Life was just feeding on that reluctance to get away from the fight and now is at 87% towards that Graviton Surge. And look at how low in the dark Zarya is right now. That is a fully charged Zarya, just ready to get that Graviton out of the way. Now Frix also has the self-destructive combo. Even more importantly, all of LFO will have the armor coming in from Swaron. Great sustain available. Fury is still blowing, um, building up those ultimates of their own. Oh, Balti once again with another huge pickoff, taking out Express at the onset of the fights. It's gonna allow Low Life to clean up three more afterwards. And now Fury, at some point, maybe you have to give up the push onto the high ground here because that's about three fights in a row where he just got absolutely demolished. Yes, they are being extremely stubborn with their strategy right now. However, if they were to go the main road, would it be even more different? We do have a lot of advantages for LFO just in terms of spawn distance to point B. It's a very difficult position for Fury. Once you don't get that initial snowball pick, it can be extremely difficult to even get a single tick, especially with Balti hitting headshots from afar. Yeah, Balti with some great right clicks. Now they speed up onto the high ground here. Finally, Fury are able to rotate properly, but LFO will go ahead and concede the high ground and just play the point. It's Fury that have to make a move here, but oh, take a look at these right clicks coming up from low life, doing so much damage. They're not able to convert it into any eliminations quite yet. It's, it's Fury now getting a little bit gun shy here, waiting for the proper opportunity, but they're not giving it as Lola continues to connect with these right clicks. 
They're gonna go in with that Graviton. Surge Monte doesn't get the heals though. Here's the self-destruct, does not quite connect. Sound barrier now pop from both sides, and it's Knight coming up with two kills here. Earth Shatter lays down the entirety of LFO, and they found their moment. They're gonna make their way onto point B, securing the second tick as Searchy tries his best to delay. And I don't know if LFO can touch this. They're gonna try and charge on out. It's gonna be a last minute contest, but Monte will go down quickly. The Wrecking Ball is out for low life, but the Adaptive Shield is not enough to keep it alive now. And the three members left remaining will not be able to survive for long here as Frex, he gets d -mech. Someone's on the high ground with a Zenyatta. If it's, if it's Express, he's ailing down easy damage. Some good delay, but Fury ultimately will be able to take it as LFO will finally give up on the defense. Patience has been my word of the day, Jamerson, and we do see Fury showing that in spades as they wait for all six ultimates to come online. And they have an obvious advantage over looking for Org, who has had to stagger out more of those key ultimates to stop pushes coming in from the attack. Now, when we have had 12 ultimates in this entire team fight, LFO has been coming out on top, whether it be in vanilla matchups, 6v6 ultimates, when the playing ground is relatively even, LFO has been winning. So Fury does know that in order to achieve their goals, in order to get these points, they need to have all of those tools up against LFO's lack thereof. So great for them to realize, but it does make me nervous for when we ultimately do go to that escort map coming up next. They did win and with one minute and 42 seconds left in the time bank. So there is an opportunity for LFO if they are able to get a snowball to have a major advantage going into this next round. But uh, instead of a snowball, there's a curveball thrown in here as Fury. They are running a double DPS composition. We got a 2-2-2, two, 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 guys, with the Pharmacy. With 98 going over to that Mercy that you had applauded. Shinigami on that Farah and Knight will be on that Doomfist. And so this Ghost composition, it can get disrupted quite heavily. And Shinigami is going to be able to rain down some free rockets with really no one to contest them quite yet until LFO try to make some swamp offs. You have no idea how excited I am to see Win98 play on this Mercy. I've heard her gameplay, her positioning being compared to even poetry, art, music. So I really do hope that she is able to show off her best hero. Now the Farah has been announced. It is here, getting some good damage off. The supports are able to get into cover even though they had gone tagged, but still Shinigami is able to thread some of these rockets in, getting decent damage for now, only at 21%. As we have LFO trying to take the high ground here, but still, this is a dangerous <laughs> task. They have to be careful. They have to move as one full unit, but here comes a dive out from Fury. Knight is able to get on top of Balti and take him out. And this push might already be over here as Shinigami getting some free damage across Express, taking out Sauron and the LFO get thwarted in their attack gameplay coming in from fury being able to take advantage of their greater mobility than that goat's composition with the key pick onto balti first from knight well played textbook now let's see if they can repeat it or if lfo will switch anything it does look like balti will be going over to the moira so that he's less of a stoic target for those very powerful doomfists and faras she could also tickle Nafar a little bit, but <laughs> with a pocket that she's more than likely going to receive from Win98. I don't know if it's much of a threat right now. Oh. Speed boost, but they are not moving as a unit there. You saw that the Diva was still over by the choke point, not a, pro uh, providing, of course, that defense matrix. They are on the point, though, as the barrage comes out. It connects. Does give his life forward, but hey, Win98 is right there. Going to res him right back into it. And so LFO will get cleaned up once again. Fury now. Two minutes and 20 seconds to try and take the lead here in this series up against LFO. They want to close this out. Might be able to do it. There are now some switches coming in for LFO with Balti going back to the Zenyatta after getting um, a rocket to the face from Shinigami on that Moira. Mate will now be swapping over to the more mobile, multi-targeting Winston. So with low life now going over to the McCree himself. Here comes the Meteor Strike and he is looking for it. Will connect oh. onto two. Low life was not able to... Uh, just roll out of that one there. Knight has to be careful though. Does back away. He's got plenty of cooldowns. And now LFO, they they tried to make the swap offs, but Fury were able to just stay proactive against it and did not allow low life the space on that McCree. You could just see the light flashing in front of Balti's eyes there. As a Zenyatta, there is nothing you can do against that meteor strike. You are just so 
vulnerable and frankly slow. So right now with Shinigami getting that first pick onto Balti, we still see that common theme of the Senyata being exploited for his lack of speed. Lack of speed and also just really good proactive defense coming out from Fury right now. You see Keith leading the charge, gives his body for the play, and it's okay because again, Win98 is on this Mercy, so even though they lose him, they instantly res them back into this while LFO are just left trying to find any way onto the point. There's a minute now left for them. They have no ultimates really to speak of. They will have the rally, but that is not what you need to try and close this out. So the Shinigami's Rocket Barrage can tear through that armor extremely quickly, and Express can protect this Farah with a Transcendence if that Farah is low enough. Low life now, and Swaron switching over to double sniper with Balti going over to a sniper healer of Ana. So they are going to definitely be focusing on this Farah, trying to get her out of the skies as soon as possible. Keith again with the aggression, he's into the back line with that Primal Rage, allowing Knight to get in, takes out Balti, Sauron is gone. Now there's only 25 seconds left. They cannot bleed anymore, they have to back away. It's gonna be a last ditch effort with really no tools behind it. Mate, if he tries to go in with this Winston, doesn't even have his Primal Rage yet. Oh, this is a definitely difficult position for looking for Org. They are between a rock and a hard place, especially with all of this healing and damage boosting from the Valkyrie. Shinigami coming in with that barrage. It's Keith though and Knight. Hitting the two for one exchange. Shinigami gives his life for it, but it's fine. Again, overtime ticking away and LFO about to get full health here on Hanamura. Meteor Strike will not connect as he's able to just sidestep it for now. But Express with that transcendence signaling the win. It's going to be Fury with a full hold now taking back the lead two to one. They're going back and forth, back and forth from control, hybrid, assault. What's going to happen on Escort? I have been giving the advantage to Fury on these more control-based maps. Will we see LFO being able to rise to the occasion as their playoff stakes, and honestly their stakes and contenders, are now very much on the line, Jamerson? I mean, just that fifth and fifth and fourth spot right it is the most dangerous spot to be in because a victory yeah means relegation we have to play through trials again plenty of hungry players in south american contenders and uh overwatch open division and so many people gunning for you at this point you don't want to have that you know crosshair on your back oh. but now it is lfo with their backs against the corner they have to strike back against fury who are just one map win away from securing a playoff spot However, LFO do have the advantage of being able to choose the next map, and even though we have been seeing so much of Route 66 in South American Contenders, I'm going to say we're going to head over to Dorado, especially that they have decided to stick with, well, they decide to at least try out the double sniper with the Ana. Dorado has so many great sniper lines, so does Route 66, but especially as you go on to the second point of Dorado, those sight lines are so long and beneficial for players such as Low Life. So. My fingers are crossed for Dorado. Now, let's let's try to unpack, you know, Hanamura just a little bit more as we do have the highlights coming out here. Uh, LFO, um, they had a great attack here. A great defense, excuse me, on point B. Fury finally were able to crack it on open. And again, you are talking about it. When you have the 12 ultimates online or 11 ultimates online, Fury just kept coming up ahead. Well, I would say LFO typically does come out ahead in these mirror matchups, but Fury is being a lot more creative with their use of ultimates and now, as we can see, their compositions. I, I, I have to applaud Win98. Like, just amazing we were... awareness. I was loving it. Yeah, <laughs> we were finally able to see it out in play. You know, this season, not the greatest for Mercy, but uh, we get to see why she kept herself alive. But it was also just uh, the amount of space afforded to her. Keith being so aggressive with that Winston on the defense, making sure that really um, LFO were constantly just reacting and trying their best, but they were getting interrupted every single time. It looked like Win98 it was just flying on a cloud. She had nothing to worry about whatsoever. Purely angelic there, coming in from that Mercy variant character. I was also just impressed at... Maybe impressed isn't the best word. Alpha was very stubborn, let's just say. They, they, they were sticking to their guns. They're a phenomenal GOATS team, but they were just rattled to play against something that 2-2-2 two, 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 calm. They, that concerns me as we move forward into playoffs. If LFO is able to take this to map five and win, trouble up against a lot of these teams who do prefer the Doomfist, who do prefer that Farah. So this is a bit concerning if they do move on to playoffs as this is great scouting information for their perspective 
um, you're right they, they enemies they are fighting for the fourth seed they're going to be facing off against whoever wins this faces off against the first seed from group a as it is going to be dorado for our fourth map will this be the final one will fury be able to close this out but yeah you have to talk about willingness to change and having to change up your composition it was weird how lfo were doing it doing it piecemeal Balti going over to the Moira and then trying to go over to the McCree, then going for double sniper, but way too late. And that is not a good sign if they somehow pull out this series with basically the reverse sweep at this point. And I was so impressed by Fury specifically on Elios when they were trying to run that Roadhog, saw what was going on and then left, went back to spawn immediately, adapted and were able to take that map. Or in so Overwatch when you have so many options, but the counters, they they just seem a lot more aware of ways to counter the enemy team right now. Now, um, Dorado, just a little bit of statistics. Fury don't have a map win on it quite yet. They played against uh, Isurus, uh, Isurus and LFT Owl on it. Both losses, you know, you can see kind of why. Group B is pretty strong. LFO, though, also, uh, they've played it up against LFT Owl. Isaurus and Up, the only time they were able to win it out was Up against Up, and that was their one map win in that 3-1 loss up against them. So Dorado doesn't, you know, really uh, instill a lot of faith in both teams in this, but who do you think walks away with this win then? LFO. I'm going to say LFO. that LFO takes this away because of their strength in their snipers, particularly Low Life's Widowmaker. I, I, there's just so much opportunity for them to flex However, hmm, this is tricky, Jamerson. These two teams have been subverting a lot of my expectations tonight's game. Yeah. Fury has improved so much even from the last week that I have seen them, especially when Win98 is playing over to her strengths. So let's take a look at the defense coming in from Fury first. We do have that GOATS composition with Win98 on the Moira. So that's a little bit concerning to me as there's so much height to abuse. But oh, they're going to be extremely sneaky just waiting inside the small room. Here comes the speed boost. No, they're able to kite away from it. That was a great shield bash coming out uh, from, I believe. Yeah, it was going to be Sauron there just to shut down this aggression. And now they're just stuck in this room. They're waiting for the cooldown of that speed boost. And now they will be able to charge on out. But it's the charge coming out from Mate getting the DMEC onto Glitch now. And they just give up and forfeit their lives, forfeit a lot of ultimate charge over to LFO as they get this payload moving. We have seen this work with Maze, for example. We have seen this work with more Zenyatas, but I have never seen this work for more than a single push. However, Fury will be able to recontest the payload with a bit of ult charge, especially for Keith, but you do see that this was a, a single attempt effort as Win98 and Express do switch over to the Lucio Zenyatta to respond to Searchy and Balti's own composition from that support lineup. Yeah, really quick swaps coming out from Fury. They know they have to answer the Zenyatta for Zenyatta, but again, that means you reset your support ultimates with the way that they have to do it. Express swapping off from that Lucio it means he is completely reset now. But Fury is here to contest. The Earth Shadow comes out, but Keith expertly blocks that out, and they're going to punish Low Life, who gets way too aggressive. Counter Earth Shadow comes out and it connects onto two with the charge out from Keith. Takes out Searchy, and Fury will, will be able to stabilize on this defense. Fury does have that stabilizing factor of the rally as well with Shinigami about to be able to give his team all of that armor. They're going to need it. Looking for Org is approaching six ultimates rapidly with Mate at the least amount of charge, but he's been building up those Earth Shatters so quickly. Mode Life is leading the charge with a Graviton Surge and Balti, you know, will be able to adapt to anything with that Transcendence. Look at this route coming out from LFO. They're just using that underground passage to avoid any spam uh, coming out from Fury. Low Life gets some good energy. He's up to 40. He still has that, of course, projected barrier he can use to get more energy, but he has to be careful with it. So he is being a little bit cautious with it now as the rally has popped. Graviton Surge comes out, but there is a transcendent self-destruct right in the middle of it. The shield bash is not enough to try and interrupt in time. Counter Graph coming out from Fury now. They've got their self-destruct, but Mate is going to be able to stand resolute in front of it as Baldi takes out Keith. It's the two-man advantage for LFO. They are looking to push this payload forward. Now have to clean up the members of Fury, but that was an expertly played fight coming out from them. The timing from Balti was extremely lucky for that transcendence. He was able to survive the self-destruct coming in from Glitch, which exploded practically half a second before his transcendence ran out, allowing them to keep that Discord orb, which has been so vital throughout this entire matchup. Now the aggression will come in heavily from LFO as they create some space. 
Oh, now it's the aggression coming up from Fury though. Sound barrier used by Searchy just in time to keep Mate alive as Keith does not have the shield any longer. He has the back away. He has an Earth Shatter for now. They're going to wait for the payload to try and push through. Maybe just a little bit. Obstruct the backing, uh, the ability to try and run away. And what a huge Earth Shatter that connects up to the entirety of LFO. Three members already gone. Low Life going to try and survive for now, but he's not going to be able to hold on to that high energy. He still has that Graviton Surge, but he's not going to have the oomph behind it without that energy. This is a great place for Fury to be able to hold this very natural choke point. And not only did Keith just demoralize looking for Org right there, they were able to gain even more ultimate charge. Shinigami still having that armor available will allow the sustain on this, I suppose, car wash area, Symmetra might say, to stay for quite a while unless looking for Org uses their ultimates very wisely. Graviton Surge was used as that defense matrix just runs out. We will be able to block it. Now it's Sauron caught in the Graviton Surge. Self-destruct now. We'll see if they're going to be able to block it themselves. No, it's Keith that gets back, takes out Searchy. Now it's a man advantage for Fury here on the defense. They get aggressive. They jump on forward. Shinigami backs away because he was low on that uh, on that oh. Rigita. As Keith, he tries to get into their spawn, but of course you can't run in there. Now he's going to back away. What a great defense so far coming out from Fury here on point B. And look how quickly Shinigami was able to charge more armor already at 90% to another rally, which is relatively slow to charge, to be completely frank. He is lapping Suaron in that ultimate charge right now, and Keith now has an Earth Shatter of his own to decimate LFO. Oh, another beautiful setup there as they go in for another Earth Shatter. Keith connecting once again. It's going to be rinse and repeat. Knight getting close to that Graviton Surge for the next fight, and LFO, they ran out of gas about two fights ago here, still trying to build up any ultimates. They're dying so quickly, they don't even have a chance to really gain even a charge or sustain or save them for the next fight. They just don't have any. And Keith's aggression is allowing the rest of Fury to supplement their own ultimate economy. We do see Knight, Glitch, Win98, practically the entire team almost at ultimates of their own. LFO is in a very, very difficult spot and might want to even change up their composition to break this up. Graviton Surge. Knight is waiting for it. He's just waiting for that D.Va. They're trying to use up too much of that defense matrix, but maybe they don't need Mate was dropped low. They are able to go counter-aggressive onto them. Buy some space for Mate to try and retreat here. His Knight is getting hungry for that, but as Graviton Surge comes out, he might have gotten eaten there. So now the self-destruct, they're going to push it on over the top. Doesn't connect as the sound barrier comes out from Searchy. Glitch is able to get the DMAC onto Fricks, though, as the Transcendence will be used by Balti here. Keep LFO in this oh. fight, but an Earth Shatter once again from Keith connects onto three members. They only get Mate off of it, but finally the cleanup comes in and Fury hold on to this defense once again. LFO starting to run out of time. 38 seconds left on the clock. Look at this spawn camp coming in from Keith. Just They were just moving so forward ahead, looking for organs in their head for sure right now. But they have finally built up that Graviton Surge self-destruct combination. But Fury still has two support ultimates to counter that. This is going to be almost impossible for LFO to win unless they change their composition. Will they remain stubborn? Boop to try and disengage from Keither, but there's a Graviton Surge out from LFO. Low life, I think it got eaten. And it's the counter grab coming out. Sound barrier will be used along with the Transcendence. We got a little bit of stacked ultimates there. And that might be punished as LFO. Surge, he's at 77% towards the sound barrier. Overtime ticking away now as Glitch on the front lines has to back away. Keith is still full health. Shinigami getting close to that rally now for his team. They need anything at this point. Keith dropped low, but the armor pack is enough to keep him alive for now. Rally will be used. Will this be the tipping point? for Fury to try and finish this defense here. Sound Barrier, they buy enough time. Surgy comes in, but they're not able to get too aggressive because they have to stay on the point. Earth Shatter once again out from Keith, but this time Balti is there with the Transcendence. It's not enough for Soren to stay alive. As the grab comes out, Keith gets punished for it. It's a 5v5. Gonna be in favor for Fury until, there we go. Frix gets d -mecked. Graviton Surge, they've got the Transcendence. They're gonna layer it on top with it. It doesn't matter, Fury closed this out. And now they have a huge win condition. Person, that was absolutely incredible. And I know I need to catch my breath. So first, before we go to this next round, we're going to take a very quick break. Initiate.
you were in line. That was a quick break. We are right back into this. It's uh, Fury's opportunity to attack an LFO. Oh, man, they had trouble getting through the second phase of Dorado there. Fury is in their head. LFO knows that this is their last chance to make it to playoffs and not be in trials. And Fury is just Ready them right now. It. The confidence, the cockiness, I would even go as far as saying coming in from Fury is so fun for me to watch. They know that they are about to make it into playoffs. They are about to save their chances if they get to just a little bit over the first checkpoint. Looking for Org though, they're going to be running an interesting defensive composition that we typically see with an Arissa instead of the Winston as Mate is currently picking. Low life will be on the Widowmaker, the Suaron on a Junkrat. So a lot of damage, a lot of shield breaking potential. I am most excited though to see Balti and Searchy on the support heroes of Zenyatta and Ana. A lot of utility, also a lot of slowness. Fury does have the spawn advantage, so they might be able to change up their comp pretty quickly after seeing this. So they spot out that the, it is a Winston Diva defense and Glitch is gonna try and contest them, almost losing his mech for that effort, but luckily he stays alive and just gives a lot of ultimate charge over to Express, over to Win98 and Shinigami here. As uh, now LFO, because they don't have a Lucio, they have to back away. When they make this rotation into the fountain area, they have to back so far away now because at any moment Win98 could just press that E oh. and low life, never mind. She can't press that E from six feet under. That's a great pick is a vital pick coming in from lowlife who now has infrared sight available going to be able to stagger and make oh my gosh express has got to be terrified on the senyata for when that ultimate is finally pulled fury has not gained too much ultimate charge either but the period is still moving forward uncontested oh lowlife once again getting a huge pick off onto express and I'm, I'm surprised that Fury are just sticking around here. Uh, I don't know why they are when they don't have their Zenyatta. It's going to be so difficult. Knight almost giving up his life. Yeah, Fricks will be able to follow up on another headshot coming out from Low Life. And Keith now falls. Fury, they have to be careful here. They oh, can't get no. overconfident. Oh, but let's talk about overconfidence. Right now, this man has deserved that confidence. Getting some key shots on this Widowmaker. It's absolutely beautiful play from this Widow. Now, I think, is going to be what determines whether or not Fury will make it forward. Will they switch compositions? Will they stick to their guns? They have around 50% ultimate charge across the board, whereas looking for Org, Suwaron has that rip tire. This can be a team kill if played correctly. Yeah, very slow play coming out from uh, Fury here. Uh, for, excuse me, oh. LFO rip tire! <laughs> Oh, never ever run into a small room when there's a junk rat right on the other side of the door. And they get punished for that. That that's that's one word for it. Um, that's annihilation. <laughs> that is pure pain. Um, and we do see that Keith will be swapping over to the Winston, most likely to contest Low Life's great position on this Widowmaker. Has been relatively uncontested this whole time, so we will be seeing more of a dive look coming in from Fury. Now, Express still has to be super nervous as that Zenyatta, the key pick. Now, looking at Fury, it's been two and a half minutes and they've only built up that transcendence and now they're finally trying to get proactive. But Keith has dropped low. Express has to use that trance, but it doesn't matter. The damage boost from the orb along with the Ana just able to melt him with that headshot. And Fricks versus Glitch on the high ground, but that's only going to force out the self-destruct out from LFO while they are winning out this fight. Mate with the Primal Rage just sowing so much confusion in the back line ranks as Glitch connects with that self-destruct. Finally, finally, Fury able to make some headway now with this. Great swap off, Keith building a lot of the space for his team to allow that to happen. Both of these teams have been phenomenal at punishing over aggression. I would say even though both of these teams are quite aggressive themselves, they know how to deal with it because that's how they get beaten. So these two defenses on Dorado have been stunning from both sides. Low Life is now switching over to the Tracer, trying to get to point as quickly as possible, as there's only a few meters to go for Fury to gain victory. Yeah, someone has to get onto the point right now. It's only 10 meters away. Will it be low life? He has to be careful going into this because Shinigami is there. Shield Bash is used. And that's going to allow Keith to get the kill onto Balti. So Fury now looking to close this out. But here comes the Rip Tire. Last time we got four. This time it only got Shinigami as Glitch is able to punish Soron for it. And so Fury with the man advantage, with the respawn distance advantage, looking to close this series out as Searchy goes down. Express finally falls to low life. But low life being the sole member remaining. 
falls, and that's going to be Fury taking the 3 1. Moving on to season three playoffs. Everybody, that concludes all of the regular season of South American contenders with an amazing final matchup with Fury taking victory, probably against the odds, I would say, Jamerson, but they have earned this fully. One of the most fun matches I have seen this entire season. Yeah, what a time to peak. Now to break down this entire series, we've got the get uh, we've got the desk. Guys, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Jamerson. And wow, that was not as close as I thought it was gonna be. You know, one one at the half, and you guys had called it a fury we're gonna take this. I thought, you know, we talked at the intro, LF4 taking maps off of good teams, but that trend has continued. LF4 just can't finish off their series. Let's get into now the second two maps where I think the thing that we have noticed from both teams is the timing of ultimates, overspending and the bad timing of it. I mean, here we're going to see a play from Keith, actually, and that kind of it's like an exclamation point on your point. Um, I have to say, you say overspending of ultimates, but I think for Keith specifically, it was less overspending and more. He just had shatters so often and he was getting so many of them to connect that it was like, why not just throw them out, right? You're going to get the shatter kills. You're going to go in and get with the fight. And honestly, for Dorado, that's one of the reasons why they were able to hold so well. Keith just hitting shatter after shatter and Matei unable to really turn it back. So I think for Fury, their you know, well-deserved performance after today to get into the playoffs and off the back of some stellar main tank play here from Keith. What I really do want to highlight, though, in terms of timing, is something that we've seen quite a bit of and something that I like a really good example was attack on Hanamura's second point where we saw a graviton surge and then two support ultimates and despite that Fury still managed to take the point and it was because the timing of those support ultimates was completely off it the, he wasn't able to negate anything because the graviton had already gone off Two picks had already gone through, then suddenly, oh dear, need to use a support ultimate. Two support ultimates go through, and it's like, well, the fight's already lost, man. You were too late with your ultimate. And that's really where the timing thing comes into play. If you can't time your ultimates accurately, if you are just a split second too late, if, you, if you're Lucio and you get killed before you hit the ground when you hit Q, if you use transcendence after there's already been two picks if you again we saw on attack first point hanamura where uh, we had a zenyatta trying to stall out the point and literally his whole team had been killed but the timing of those ultimates makes absolutely no sense that's been a major theme here because a well timed ultimate could have negated a lot of keith's ultimates like keith keith has no regard for timing man he's just like oh i have i have ultimate i'm gonna hit q now um <laughs> And if, if the supports had been, you know, keeping a good eye on, on ult tracking, realizing that he's just going to throw out his ult without even thinking about it and keeping his ult or keeping their ultimates as a good defense for that, it, they might have been able to hold on. I we think were... I... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I mean, we were wondering what kind of ult tracking was going on. They already had mentioned because you had <laughs> said, Lafon, there were shatters after five man shatters after five man shatters. And I swear we saw probably like very little blocks through that whole series i mean part of it is like map geometry keith had the high ground and mate was like fighting uphill into it so it was a bit of a struggle for him on that front but i think in this case it was just a, it was just a tank owning a game you know sometimes you have breakout games where a player just comes in and just takes full control and keith i think had it for most of it here Matei just wasn't able to just answer to the pressure and yes it requires you know your zarya to play very well and i think um that in terms of bubble timings it was uh it was knight was doing a little bit better and glitch actually was doing a fantastic job of supporting as well but I, you you still have to take that the, those resources you're given and make it work and for fury keith did absolutely that and it's not just on the reinhardt on uh, on dorado you look at hanamura they full hold off the back of you know excellent uh the main tank play you know pulling the aggression f w on the winston you know goats is not really known to be uh stopped when it decides to actually get moving but they play the Farah, they play the Doomfist, and then most importantly, they play uh, Keith on the Winston, who's able to take sort of aggression away and then open up angles for the DPS to come in and provide a lot of pressure. So I think, uh, Fury, we had questions coming into tonight. Uh, can they perform? We've had questions about them the whole season long, realistically speaking, but I think they've answered them here tonight because it's, 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 it's gameplay that is uh, focused, 
it's planned, and it's executed cleanly. Something that we haven't really seen up until now for Fury. Looking for Org, though, as the season went, it ended for them as well. And it's just, you know, more of the same. They just couldn't close out maps. And That's another map. Issue. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Just uh, reiterating what Lef saying very often they'll win fights they'll win fights they'll win fights and then when it really matters they're not able to cinch and close the deal and that that's something that they really need to work on because it's not just about winning fights it's about winning the right fights making sure that that map winning fight right at the end that's the one you need to be winning and these fights have been so panicky. Like Zen Goats is the type of compositions where you just run into walls for several minutes and it's been causing players from both these teams, you know, a super important match. You're starting to get nerves. You're starting to see the players act more reactively, um, especially with the ultimates and uh, particularly Knight versus Low Life on these Zarya's. You've seen a lot of maybe B plus to C minus Gravitons being thrown from either end. Uh, Levin, you're not a teacher by any chance, are you? Oh, I might, I might be, <laughs> but I'm um, trying to create everything, but... <laughs> yeah, some of those grabs have been a bit weird. Some of those grabs have been eaten, which really comes down to, like, you've got to watch those divas, man. You know they have defense matrix. You know that they're looking for you. I mean, you see a high charge Zarya. She's running at you. You're gonna matrix because you you know you, you realize there's gonna be a grab you've got to be smarter with those grabs and that's something i noticed with knight he was really good at grabbing walls but sometimes i mean we saw it again on defense on hollywood uh sorry on, on dorado he grabbed the wall but the whole of the enemy team had managed to back right up so it was a completely wasted grab so big brain in how he wanted to execute it but unfortunately no follow through at all but zarius have been another hero in this game in particular that have just been throwing out their ult with reckless abandon in fact something we said during our analysis was every single one of these heroes is hitting q on cooldown <laughs> they're actually literally using it as an extra <laughs> cooldown there's no thought process there's no planning it's just like q fast and the team that hit q harder kind of won <laughs> well i think the question now that we're at their final day the final match it's going to come down to mvps both teams you know really fought so hard for this yes the score is 3-1 man was it back and forth for most of this i'll start with you lafon who would your mvp be of this series um i think that's one is a really tough one but i think it has to go uh I think it has to go to Glitch because uh, he was a stabilizing factor in this matchup and not really, really flashy most of the time, but actually ended up being uh, where, where he needed to be uh, in the right moment. So uh, a quiet factor, but a factor nonetheless, and one that was uh, instrumental in Fury winning this series. Nayori, what do you For think? For me, ooh, I, it's tough. I want to give it to Keith <laughs> purely because his shatters, especially on Dorado, holy cow. Dorado mm -hmm. defense, the amount of five or six man shatters he got was absolutely ridiculous. So I want to give him MVP, but there's the, there's a caveat. Please <laughs> examine Please. your ultimates before <laughs> you throw them. Think about it. I know it's working now, but you are going into playoffs. Those teams, especially I'm going to say at BTH, they are going to punish that. So yes, be aggressive. Use the resources your team are giving to you, but please consider your ultimates. Well, I think both these teams worked very hard throughout the season and have still many improvements to go. And speaking of playoffs, well, all your seeds and all your teams are determined. Congratulations to Fury to clutch uh, for clutching that last spot, getting into playoffs. And therefore, Ella Forg will have to fight through trials alongside Black Dragon. So your quarterfinals have been decided. LFTL versus Predators, or now rebranded as X10. Isurus Gaming versus TSN. Up Gaming versus Caverna and Fury versus based tryhards in the first round. It's going to be a tough one. And I'm excited to see you guys back on January 8th, 1 p.m. PST, 4 p.m. EST. Mark your calendars or you can follow this channel, which will maybe give you notifications to catch our stream. You can also catch our updates on Twitter at Broadcast DOTGG for when we go live. And I'd like to thank the staff of Broadcast GG that were able to bring Contender South America, bring Contenders China. And I mean, before us, there wasn't an English stream. So it's been awesome to bring this path to pro accessible to all viewers. Shout out to our casters, Katrina and Jamerson, for keeping through these matches, and also Labosco and Panda, our producer, Morai, and our desk, Lafon and um, Naori. There you go. I and our you. wonderful host, you. Lemon Kiwi. Thank you. I'll, I'll thank myself. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you. But I'd 
I'd like to see you guys back on January 8th, 1 p.m. PST, 4 p.m. EST for the playoffs of Contender South America. We'll see you there.